Now, but generally when I'm starting, I, whether I'm doing fast poses, long poses, makes absolutely no difference. My primary beginning is to focus on getting a simple gesture. Now, what I'm doing as I'm doing the gesture is I'm leading the eye through the drawing. So I'm just feeling the flow of how it goes. Uh, notice that actually when I do this, I'm really doing sort of a rhythm. Okay, let me, let me explain that rhythm idea a little bit here. In that when you think of rhythm in terms of like music, we think of say a drummer. A drummer is giving you a beat that leads you through a song. Well, a rhythm is like a beat that is leading you through the drawing. So I'm using rhythm in the same sense that I'm leading my eye through the drawing and I'm also leading the viewer through the drawing. Uh, now this can be done many many different ways. Uh, we talk about here is just a very simple flowing of lines. I could be doing it with a, a little more choppy kind of line. I could be taken doing that with a chamois but I'm taking and leading, leading the eye through the drawing. Now the next step in what I go through is to basically just contain the form. In other words, very simple volumes. As I'm doing this, I'm just taking and containing, going over, over the surface, seeing how one form fits into another. Now, as I do this, these are volumes. So the whole point then in doing these volumes is to take and contain, of course. But this is a, a constructive uh, approach. So as I'm drawing from imagination, this constructive approach is allowing me to visualize three-dimensionally uh, what I'm drawing. Okay. Now, at that point, now this could be done, uh, the idea is of thinking of simple three-dimensional forms is very, very fundamental. It could be animation, it could be traditional drawing, it could show Raphael, uh, Michelangelo, it could be breaking things down in boxes. But the idea is, essentially, is containment, simple volumes fitting into each other. That's the essence of the form. Now, of course, you have to take and have a sense of the size of these volumes, what have you. But once you have that, and this is where there's a big misconception uh, with a lot of people. They look at my drawing and they see a style. This aspect of the drawing is totally non-stylistic. It's a concept of taking and how you approach the drawing. As a, a, in a way, it's a, it's a workman's approach to doing it. Nuts and bolts, as I say. Now, once I've got that, I could render these forms in many, many different ways. There's where the style comes in. Let's just take, for instance, here a little bit, and we'll uh, uh, look at the a little bit of the torso here. Through. Here we have a simple volume underlying form. Now, I could take and render this form. I could use tone going over the surface. I can take and be here, like using tone, pulling through, going across. Now, what's the essence of the drawing? It, would, it could look, have a totally different look than if I was taking and using, let's do another version here. If I was taking and coming through and doing, now this might get a little low on the scene here. Okay, if I was coming across and doing what am I doing? What I'm doing here is I'm taking this form 
and I'm consciously thinking about going over the surface of the form. I'm visualizing, this is like a wireframe in a computer. This is visualizing the surfaces of the form. Now, whether I do this with tone or take and work with it doing, like say, a cross hatch, which is I generally do quite a bit of. In other words, just taking and building very carefully, dealing with series of lines going over the surface. It's like uh, carving, taking and feeling these planes. But the essence of what I'm doing is drawing one volume, as we started here, one volume fitting into another volume. So once I have that, I can, once I have that simple volume, I can then build on that, okay? The basis of that simple volume is thinking about the center of the form. If I think of the center of the form, like taking a, um, like I say, a, if you have a word and you put a bracket around it, you've contained it, okay, you have a center, you have the word here. So now when I'm thinking of the center, I'm just bracketing it and containing it within that surface. So there's nothing really complicated about that. Now, I, once I have that, if I have that, then I can take and go from that and I can add other volumes on top of that. I can take and focus on how these surfaces fit one into another. So is a stylistic consideration then I could take and if one I can say well let's say there's a light source coming from up here I can come in and add a core I can take and drop a cast shadow I could take and do this in many many different ways but it's all based on the idea that you're seeing a very very simple volume and then you're building one volume on top of the other. So, but the point here is this is not so much a graphic statement as it is a three-dimensional form. The graphic statement would be taking and coming in and focusing on a two-dimensional primarily contour of the drawing. And that is not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is, and this is where uh, it's a conceptual thing is that instead of drawing the contour and then coming going into that I'm creating a contour with the forms that I'm drawing now as you're doing this you could take in like I say this could be all kinds of different like I was taking down here and doing lines going over the surface I could uh, Visualize it going more direct. I could just take and say, well, and this is a different uh, approach to it. I could take and visualize these forms without taking and drawing the simple forms, but I draw, I think of the simple forms. So as I come through, I say, okay, here I'm drawing directly. I'm visualizing all of those forms coming over, like the navel coming through. So now, this is more of a direct drawing. So as I'm going over the surface of the form, and actually you'll find that as you develop your skills, you will uh, take and tend to do more direct drawing, and it will end up having more vitality to it. Uh, in the discussions uh, we were just having was that question came up okay, uh, about, about drawing. One of the things that my feeling about drawing, and that's why I think of myself as, as a drawer, and it's a, 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 that drawing is the most autobiographical of the forms. It's the thing that's most direct uh, that you can take and do uh, that is closest to you, uh, like your signature. It is a signature. So consequently, uh, in my own drawing then, it's very normal for people to take and see a stylistic 
element in the drawing. Yet what, I'm, what you're seeing is my personality in the drawing. Yeah, you're, it's my signature. So as I'm doing the drawing, starting out, I'm taking in a little bit, feeling the flow, and letting the rhythm drive the eye through the figure. And so I'm flowing, it's a certain flow. And in a sense, what makes my drawing look like my drawing is that I have a certain sense of rhythm in the way I do things. And in fact, I've had a student say that watching me draw, uh, it's so hypnotic that it almost puts them to sleep and that the way it's just a continuous flow. So here you can see what I've done is I'm just feeling the thing, but now if I go back into that. I'll take and think of the simple volume. Now here I'm not even drawing the whole thing. I'm just hitting a fragment, I'm visualizing it. So as I come through and over. Now, as far as rendering it, I could take and render this thing uh, again here now I'm, I'm visualizing from here see I'm drawing a contour now that's from mileage I have drawn the figure so many times that I can take in and here's where I'm doing is I'm actually thinking of anatomy I'm thinking of how things go and I'm coming through and drawing directly uh, but I'm visualizing it but the idea is what I'm visualizing still is a simple cylinder. I think of where the decile, where the muscles take and come in. I'm building it, but it's very direct. And I'm not copying form. So I'm taking in, seeing with my mind's eye in a way. Now I can render this by taking and using tone, going over the surface. Here I'm just pushing forms back in a way. So I'm using tone. I was asked uh, the question of, well, don't I draw, I, I draw with the cross hatching so much and I draw with tone. Yes, I draw with tone, but I create, the cross hatching is creating tone. So I can take and drop whole areas in shadow. Coming through, but I'm not obviously not copying the shadows because I don't have any. Uh, I'm taking it each time I go through, I'm correcting it and changing it. I'm going now here, I'm using a cross hatch going over the surface of the form. Uh, as a student, we used to refer to be referred to as a lot of people say lightning bolts approach to taking and dealing with it. But it was just taking and going over the surface. Now that ended up being a stylistic element. They gave it a certain look. Right? Now, if I come to see, now I'm taking and dropping all of this into shadow. Now, as I do that, I could take and leave this all one dark tone. I could take and picking up, trying to visualize where the shadows would be. But at the same time, in doing that, I could say, well, I really. Personally, I like to see all of the forms. So now, even though this is a flat tone, what you find a lot of the illustrators are taking and doing today, it's just a flat tone. Well, the Riley School tends to deal a little bit more with that. Now, but I'm gonna say, well, I mean, imagine the light source coming from the other side. So now I'm taking and adding a shadow being caused by the light, reflected light, imaginary reflected light. Well, what that does, it defines this surface here. So now I'm coming over that corner and emphasizing what would be called the core. So now I've got the core, cast shadow coming through and I'm slowly adding to this and we could take and really create some strong cast shadows. Well, again, this becomes a, a, a look, yet it's all based on just a simple idea of 
simple volumes, one fitting into another. Uh, and I would have to be correcting myself here. I made this uh, rear end a bit large. Coming through, pressure down. So you're building on this thing, but I could just as well take and be defining this by using heavy, harsh lines. So let's take and go back into this. In other words, I could be doing this, coming through. Oh, I do exactly the same thing with drawing with a pen, which is, let, let's just take and do a pen drawing here while I'm at it. Now, when I'm doing this, you will see that I don't draw any difference. This is a little large for what I would do with a pen, but uh, see, I'm still taking and feeling the flow. I'm going across and thinking, I'm literally thinking about going over the surface. I'm containing this form. Now, I'm coming through of going over and around the surface. Well, this is really no different than what I was doing with a pencil. Except, of course, it's going to have a very different look because I'm drawing with a pen. So as I'm going through, as we build this thing. Now, one of the elements is I'm taking and doing a quick sketch. Now, this is a, not so much a quick sketch, but let me explain this a little even farther. There's actually a, a, a series of hand movements. Hand movement being one, what I'm doing here is going with the flow of something. Okay, the second is I'm going over the surface. And third, it's containing by doing this. So now if we combine all three of those in a very quick uh, type of gesture, I would take and do There's essentially only three hand movements. But what I'm doing, as you can see here, is that I'm going through the form. I'm taking and going around over the form. And I'm containing the form. Yet, it seems really loose and flowing, yet it's actually very, uh, like, I don't want really to say precise, but it's very deliberate is what I'm doing. So that from here, I could very easily take and since I've already visualizing the volume and I've got the movement, now I can take and build into that other forms and emphasize contours, emphasize the, say here, we feel how forms are fitting in. But it's a, it's a very, very deliberate, and in, in a way, this is now, I try to make a little definition here, is that it's sort of the difference between sketching and drawing. I'm not really sketching, I'm drawing. So if I'm taking an even a head, I would take and going over, and through, think of the construction, going through, See, everything's very deliberate. I'm visualizing the underlying structure, the anatomy. Over the surface, through. Now, it has a different stylistic look. And now if I was to go back into this, I could actually combine, say, the pen drawing with, let's say, even using a tone of a graphite or polychromo pencil. I could take and start visualizing structure. 
I'm thinking now what I'm doing is I'm drawing planes. Going through. Building. But it's no different than really what I was doing before. Looks different, only because the technique is a little different, but the underlying logic has not changed at all. I'm just taking and being a little bit more nervy about how I'm approaching the drawing. So the idea is to not be constricted to thinking that there is only one way to take and do it. There's no, there's no, uh, let's say over and over, no rules. So as I'm doing the drawing, I'm taking and trying to understand a pose. I'm taking and feeling how the parts go through. I'm leading the eye. I am taking and using the rhythm like a drummer taking and leading a group. I'm driving the eye through the figure. I go over the figure and I'm pulling around so the different strokes now. One following through, the other coming through, then going across over the surface, going around over the surface, and then containing the volumes. Take containing and building on those volumes. So it's constantly three strokes, it's analysis, but it's all built on the idea of first get the gesture, the general leading the eye, the drummer, then filling it out and then taking and describing it a little bit more. So that, in a way, is the essence of what I do. As you take and develop the drawing farther, then it becomes a matter of uh, personal uh, desires in terms of the look that you want, uh, understanding of the next layer of forms that you are taking and working on. And also at the same time, uh, individually you can be may maybe more preoccupied or more concerned with the two-dimensional shape that things go, create. But I personally take and start with the volumes and then work to creating a abstract shape uh, for instance, in here, I could see I would be focusing maybe on a, a straight line. If I have a straight line, I can pull off of that straight line with forms into the interior. And the more I emphasize the two-dimensional aspects of it in conjunction with thing, again, the drawing takes on a different look. So how you play, how you orchestrate uh, your rhythms, your, your line, the quality of line that you make, uh, whether it's very subtle, very free, is going to take and give us the look that you want. And even the gesture, as you're doing the gesture, the gesture can be done. Working with tone to begin with, just taking and feeling, feeling the masses of the thing, which I do generally with a chamois. So that you're taking in Again, you're getting the essence of what the action is, because the gesture is the soul of your drawing. It's what it's all about. It's, your, it's the story. It's the point. And that's what we're after. And then from that, then I, again, I would be doing the same thing. Coming back in, thinking of the volume. Even if I only hit pieces of that volume, I draw it as if I could see the whole thing. So I'm coming through. Building within that feeling how one form works with another. So it's a, a and, I, and I'm constantly taking and still, I'm always looking for 
uh, more interesting ways uh, to take and use those basic fundamentals that I have.